Hey everybody, welcome back to more fun at the Red Barn. Let's get back on Racer Benz and see if we can't finish up getting this vet suspension all the way done, shall we? Hey everybody, welcome back. It's another day at the Red Barn, and as promised, we're going to keep chipping away at Racer Benz. And I also mentioned in the last episode that uh, you meet Martin at some point. Those of you that are following the 914 Ferrari build already saw him helping out with the intake manifold, which was all that work. And now, Martin unfortunately has drawn the short straw of working in the car while I'm <laughs> while I'm his gopher, uh, running the uh, tubing notcher and some various trimming devices whilst he is stuck fitting and tacking in the chassis. So what are we up to today? What we're doing is, as you saw, uh, if you're following the Grassroots Motorsports build, I capped the ends of the vet cradles with some inch and three quarter tube and then capped it and plated it in. That to serve as a takeoff point for some strut rods that are gonna run down to the base of the firewall. And these are gonna end up completely up and down uh, in line with each other and then from that, we can build off the crossbar for the motor. And that's also gonna, you know, obviously be the main tie-ins for the vet cradle to the Benz chassis. But we also have opportunities to plate, you know, in some of these other gaps and maybe, you know, we'll, we'll probably run, you know, a tube from maybe this shock tower down to the motor mount and probably also like from this door bar point down to the top of the motor, where the, you know, the motor mount crossbar hangs. So, uh, we're just going to, again, keep chipping away, and I'll, uh, I'll update you here as progress is made. Boy, oh boy, is this thing coming along. It's looking really cool. And now the fun is double miter angle end cuts, so we're going to do this manually on the face saw. See how that goes. Okay, well that's a pretty good day's work. We got all four bars in, so let me just show you one side. And by the way, that last little miter cut you saw me doing, I must say, I'm impressed with myself. I got that thing to fit weldably, like actually pretty tight, tolerances all the way around that tube with a full-on freeform hand cut on that bandsaw. So, you know, I'll take... Uh, I'll take lucky over good any day. But anyway, so here we go. So this is the, it's not completely done yet, but this is the cap, the top cap. And then these two bars are parallel. Actually, they're not parallel. They're a little bit wider here uh, and they taper to this, this base. And then we've got the uh, support structure here. Notice too that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a plate that comes off of here and grabs both of these bars, you know, one on each side, and then I'll cap it uh, on top, top and bottom. Uh, to tie this into this big old honking steel structure. And then we're gonna end up doing an X brace from here across and right above the shock uh, mount on each side. And then, you know, we'll X brace the other way. And again, these will then these will come out. Obviously this mount comes out, probably tie some stuff in here. And uh, in all, it's, as they say, it's not going anywhere. And then, yeah, I gotta, I gotta finish off the bottom of this. I gotta cap the bottom of this, do a little bit of trimming. Um, it's not as attractive I was, as I was hoping it might be, but it's absolutely functionally gonna be great. And as I mentioned, once I get the Boxster Trans mocked up, mocked up and I got a, a plastic LS block that I'm gonna set in here, we'll be able to get the motor mounts on it and then figure exactly where fore and aft on these bars to build a uh, universal, if you will, universal mount onto which I can bolt a crossbar, not unlike we do in the LS or in the, you know, V8914 conversions. But, you know, here's the other side, same deal. And uh, yeah, we took the time to angle match the bars. So this is all symmetrical. Top bar and bottom bar measure out the same dimension each way. And, you know, pretty much tacked in. Again, support structure bar there. Same plating situation here. And then some equidistant placed little support blocks for the base of the the new firewall so we've got the we got the vet frame the vet cradle back here uh pr pretty much locked in place and uh yeah i took it all down but i had that you probably saw in an earlier video or some of the pictures we he strung the car did the alignment got everything set up 
And with uh, the toe set and the camber set, that's the rear wheel in the wheel well. So really happy with how it's turned out. And uh, now it's just gonna be, you know, get the rest of those cradles tied in or the rest of the frame rails tied in. And I think in the next day or so, I'll start uh, fitting the transaxle and working out the mounting structure for that. And then the motor ends up where it ends up. And uh, we're, we'll be, we will on our way. So thank Well, you. after uh, this morning's effort, I can tell you that Martin indeed drew, drew the short straw on, uh, on yesterday's effort. Uh, being in the car and having to get out of the car every time you need to do another operation or, or tune a tube, uh, it's just a, uh, it's a lot of work and it's pretty warm here today. So I'm, uh, I'm calling this my workout, but I made some good progress. So this is the first of the crossbars, all right? And it's gonna tie in, as I mentioned, to the bottom of the uh, suspension tower cross brace. And my notcher only does about a 58 degree cut before it starts running into itself. And this is steeper than that. So there was a bunch of hand fitting that had to go on to get that done. And then here you can just see how it's gonna land on the doubler plate. And that's, that one's not down yet. I gotta knock this one out of the way first. So uh, anyway, that got fit. That got a pretty good fit. I might need a little bit more tuning here. There's a, it's got a teeny bit of a gap at the end, but not bad. Now at the back, it's a little bit different story. I wanna preserve as much of the Mercedes, you know, crumple zone. I'm assuming that this has been engineered as a crumple zone. So I don't wanna do anything like tie, you know, the main chassis right back into here. Cause then any impact that the car might take you know, is transferred directly into all this work we've just done. But I do need to have a transmission hanger crossbar here. And where exactly it won't be determined until I get the, until I get the transaxle, you know, kind of mocked in here, which I, I hope maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do that later today. And uh, obviously I'll cover that as I get to it. But let's assume that the crossbar sits, golly, I don't know, you know, maybe it's going to sit about here someplace. I wouldn't mind then, you know, just kind of truncating everything here and tying it in even with maybe just a plate, um, you know, because this is this is all going to be pretty strong and it's pretty well supported everywhere. And it's going to tie, you know, the rails at the front are going to tie in. We're going to probably tie them in from here, you know, to this part of the chassis as well. So, you know, I want to let the back of the car move if it was ever impacted. Um, but a little bit of that's going to be TBD once we get the once we get the transaxle mocked into place. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to keep at it, and I'll keep you up to as I make progress here with, uh, with this cross brace setup. More to come. Another day, another lesson learned about planning ahead. So all that stuff you just saw that I did yesterday has been cut out. And the reason for that was I didn't realize, you'd think I would know, having had a LS car with the same transaxle in it, uh, I made the assumption that that crossbar was going to be way back here someplace. And it turned the transmission mount crossbar. And it turns out it's gonna be like way up here. And so having crossbars that landed in this area didn't make any sense because I wanted to support the back of this cradle a little better. So out came the work I did yesterday. And we're gonna go from the back edge of this, which is this was already plated, and we're running down to the far back edge of where this plate's gonna be. I'm probably gonna end up truncating these about here. So this one's about where it's gonna be. But anyway, so now what we're doing is we've, we've basically taken that X brace and swung it back. We got the first one in, and yeah, Martin's back here today helping again. Um, this is just so much easier with two people. I mean, I actually had the, you know, had the transaxle in there earlier, and uh, it's, it's almost impossible to do this work alone. Some of this stuff is big, so he's over there. He's over there doing real work while I'm I'm being Gomer guy. Anyway, so a little bit different look, right? So it's going to come back and support the rear part of this. I think it's going to be a little better. Oh, and look at that. We got the coilovers in, and they look super cool. And they're in the front too. Give you a look, see. All right, sorry for the noise, but woo they're very pretty. So anyway, I'm going to put you on time lapse and uh, you can watch the fun fitment here for a second.
right, well, rather than make you watch that for the rest of the tubage, what you're getting is that was the exercise that was the exercise necessary to get that gap or that notch set and that angle set. Uh, this is this is major milestone stuff. The car's on its wheels, it's on its shocks, and it's about to be completely, you know, disassembled. All this stuff that's been holding the the frame rails in place are about to be taken out, and then we can really go to work on getting the drivetrain figured out. So we'll be right back in a bit. Okay, just like I told you, we we're not going to take you through the creation of all these tubes. It's a little repetitive, but here you go. This is one little neat trick that uh, Martin showed me that that is super duper handy, which is just a notched piece of wood. And as you're trying to get everything, you know, when you're getting your final fitting before final tacking, or you know, tacking for final fitment, this is a super duper way to get everything to be aligned. And you know, you got to get your target places equidistant and all that. But uh, just a nice little trick. But there we go. There is the X brace uh, fitted. And now we're just going to get the, some welding done, and we'll be done with this element, and we can start pulling other parts of the car uh, or other parts of the the fixturing for these frame rails out and get the drivetrain fitted. So, onward. Okay, now I'm gonna make a plate. I'm gonna add some style points to a plate. I'm gonna go ahead and add some speed holes and using a dimple die. Uh, and I thought I would just go ahead and film this. So, the first thing that has to happen is you gotta make, this is the size dimple I'm gonna use, and it requires a hole that big. And these are from Swag Off Road just like my bandsaw stand and my roll bender. I love Swag Off-Road stuff. And uh, I also got a set of uh, what they're called knockout punches. And these are cutters that you put into a, a hydraulic system and it just slices a hole that size, which is the proper size hole for the dimple die. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And I'm just using a quick and dirty Harbor Freight uh, hydraulic ram. Uh, it's a super duper tool, not very expensive. So all it requires is the appropriate size hole for this mandrel. And I'm gonna go ahead and place that on here and cut this. And up this comes and out comes, out comes the slug. And that's what just got, that's what just got punched out of the 10 gauge. And it leaves a nice hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on, on the next one. And now, this is where you gotta pay attention. This is the orientation of the plate in the car. And so I have to determine which way I want the, the dimple to go. And since this is the front, I wanna put the dimple going backwards. So I'm gonna put the, the female part of this on here. And then I want the dimple, you know, this angle to go back. So that slides into that hole. This slides into this hole. And now I need in place, close the valve, and now, make a dimple. Now it may be, sometimes with the thicker material, you can see, you might be able to see how that's bending it up, and I might not have enough power with this, to, uh, to get the thing to lay down flat. So let's take a look and see. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit stiff. That's a little bit thick. You can see it, it put a bend in it, but that gives you the basic idea. So now, if you'll give me just a second, I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to the hydraulic press and we'll, uh, we'll finish up there. You can see it it, uh, it pulled a little bit of the material from the middle and kept a, a teeny bit of a bend in it. So I had to kind of give it the one, two. And I'll go ahead and straighten that all the way out. But there you go. There's a little panel with some speed holes in it. And when this gets... So this panel, this is going to sit right in here. 
ish ish like so ish anyway so that's ready to uh to get tidied up and tacked in and that'll support this side i'll make another one for the other side and this will be you know this crossbar which is really just a fixture uh will come out pretty soon and we can start fitting the drivetrain okay back in the car after that and here's what this looks like right so kind of crappy lighting sorry about that but uh those plates tie the frame rail that frame rail to a pretty significant structure that is this inner that is this inner bends frame rail and then so that's done on both sides those are all those are all put in and i've been able now to take that uh, fixture and crossbar out so i've got a pretty wide open space in here now and then this is just a mock-up but i think what i'm going to do is now end up boxing you know build the top box that ties this plate to the rest of this frame rail and then i'm not sure the angle exactly but then this then this will get cut off and then as you can see that's just a big open section of the bends frame and so that needs to be capped off and there's probably a, a nice way to tie that in and you know make that tighten and i got going on this piece this is a another plate and what's going on here is this is going to be the front side of a tie that does that that sits against the bends frame rail or this bulkhead and then ties in you know i can weld it on the inside there i still got to do some tuning to get the fit right but right that ties both of these frame rails at this length and then you know plate you know plate the top down into here and then have a rear a rear plate that comes out and grabs them and then a front plate that you know would close that box off uh but when you think about it that that ties both of these to this location this is boxed into a pretty significant structure here and this is only you know that's probably maybe not that's maybe not even two feet and then with the engine cradle crossbar we don't know exactly where that's going to be but gosh you know it's it's you know it's not way up here and it's not way back here let's just assume it's sort of in the middle um and this isn't the piece that would be used but it gives you an idea right so this will get some kind of support right above that mount and i think i don't know that i need a bar from here to here and a bar from there to there i don't know that that's necessary um this is going to all be pretty well tied together but there you go so that's the progress for today and we just keep chipping away as i say so thanks for watching appreciate your time and uh, leave me any comments down below think of subscribing if you haven't and we'll catch you up next time at the red barn Bye bye